So a lot of people have been asking questions about the storm swarm. How are they doing? How's it going? We collected them back on August 10th and here they are. Just over a month later. A month and a day in fact. So here's the landing board. We always like to look at the landing board ahead of time. I've given them a little identification tag there, number six. And we look close here and see that they're bringing lots of pollen in. There's not a bunch of guard beads on the front so they're not too defensive. We're going to get in here and do a frame by frame inspection. We're going to do the whole thing in 17 minutes. So hang out with me for a while and we'll see everything. So the other thing is when we put them in here we had no drawn comb. So we put in heavy waxed acorn frames which are my favorite. We tested some new Cirrusel heavy wax one piece plastic frames. I did not feed them because we have lots of resources coming in from the environment. So part of the evaluation here is to see how they do on their own without any help. And we are smoking them today even though it is 76 degrees Fahrenheit which is 24 Celsius. I'm doing the inspection at 3 p.m. so the sun is still nice and high. We're going to pry this insulated inner cover off here which is something else I'm testing this year so we put that on there and this is a 10 frame deep. So we gave them no help. We gave them a box. Heavy wax frames. And here we are. You can see the burr comb connecting the tops of these frames to that inner cover. And uh, they're pretty calm in here. So we'll put some light puffs of smoke in there just to keep them that way. And we're going to go through them frame by frame. It looks here like they've got four frames that are not yet completely drawn out. But all the wax that we're going to see in here is brand new. Made by the bees. So again, they're nice and calm. We're going to pull these out of the way so that we can pull the frames sideways. I always like to make space there. There are a few stragglers here and that is the Cirrusel one piece heavy wax plastic frames and uh, looks okay to me. They're not working those yet. And again we're going to look at every frame. So I'm going to leave nothing to your imagination. The question is can we find the queen in here today? You're going to have to watch and find out. So when we look at these frames, we're hoping that they've uh, got some start there. You can see that it's light yellow where they are starting to work it just a little bit. So the population isn't bad. Population is on the rise. That's evidenced by the fact that we've got lots of pollen coming in. And I expect to find brood over here in the next few frames. And the wax workers are doing okay. Considering this is a swarm, a lot of people would have passed up. So they were way high in a tree. Question as to whether or not he could even get up there to reach them. And then I figured what the heck. We have nothing to lose. Let's just go ahead hive them up. See how they do. So we shook them into a hive butler box. Carried them over here and dumped them into this box. These frames had arrived on the exact same day. I collected the swarm. So it made hiving possible because I was honestly out of equipment. Nothing's cooler than to look at brand new comb inside your hives. So these are workers here. We've got some capped honey and lots of open nectar here in the process of being dehydrated down. And the resources coming in are from several varieties right now. Cosmos. They're there getting their pollen from the Cosmos flowers. Sunflowers are making a showing. The asters are in bloom. And we have goldenrod. So feeding them isn't necessary. They're getting more than enough resources out in the environment. And uh, again, we're just going to leave them like that for a while because we've got several weeks of nectar flow ahead of us. So I think they're going to do fantastic. And given how they're looking right now, I'd say they're going to do just fine on their own. I'd like them to fill this box and then we might get a super on within a couple of weeks here. Because they do build pretty fast. Faster than you might think. And if we have some brood going in here, you're going to see an increase in the workforce, which of course will bring more resources in a shorter amount of time, even though our days are getting shorter. Here we go. More capped honey. Down lower left there, we've got a small collection of capped brood. And uh, surrounding that, we've got some shallow cells with nectar stored in them. And little spots of pollen. That's the orange stuff that you see there. And I've marked the ends of all the frames, so I'll be sure to put these back the way they were taken out. And they're concentrating uh, a lot of their production, of course, to the east side and to the southeast. 
single entrance as we showed in the beginning here and we are not using the hive gates on these because we have to have comparisons between different hives different colonies to see how they handle those entrances just a light smoking here and that's to get them down and off the backs of these frames so I don't put my finger on any of them and get stung I'd really like to get through just one hive inspection without getting my thumb stung and that happens because I always put my thumb on top of some bee and look at all this brood here that's pretty good and we've got some empty cells there uh, that have uh, well they're not empty cells they've got nectar in them we've got some empty cells in the field there so a little spotty and that uh, brood is concentrated towards the front of the hive which faces south and then the top parts of course this is capped honey resources for the bees now considering that they've been in for a month now i would say they're doing pretty good i like this brood here and that is worker brood not drones and again they're staying calm they're just going about their business here we do have some wind gusts that you can probably hear This is the only wooden frame in here and it's got that uh, acorn insert that I cut the corners off of and that's so they would have their own little pathways through it. That's a practice that I'm going to continue doing. So when I put these plastic inserts into these frames for the foundation, I'm gonna cut all four corners because I found that the bees leave them open and use them for venting, uh, transit routes and everything else. We have lots of uh, capped honey on here at the top and then we have more brood at the bottom and that's mixed in with nectar and we've got of course the pollen stored which is great right next to where they're developing the baby bees that's a good convenient location for them i'm going to try to get you in close here so we can see all the cells and see what's going on in here and make guesses about the overall health of the colony it's really important to look at the condition of your brood cells in particular if they're greasy looking or they're sunken in or the bees are chewing them open for one reason or another you might have problems but the uh, brood in this colony is looking really good to me lots of pollen there pollen of course is the protein that they need to raise their baby bees so during their open brood period that's when they're going to be fed and right here we've got what looks like a queen cup now normally a supersedure queen cell might be built in the middle of the field like that, but it's just a queen cup. And what's the difference between a queen cup and a queen cell? Whether or not it has an egg in it and whether or not they're developing something. So this one's empty. We have a nice, uh, nice light here about three o'clock in the afternoon. So we can still see into all these cells, get a good look. Oh, there's eggs. So here we go. If we see eggs like this in the cells, we can uh, know for sure that the queen has been through here within the last three days. The other thing is, are the eggs standing up on their ends or are they laying down? Some of them are standing up on end. That means they're really fresh. And there's some reflection here on that black background, which can make it look like there's more than one egg, but there is just one egg in the cell. Little reflections are deceiving sometimes. I'm glad that showed up on the camera. We're going to keep going through here because I'd really like to get the queen today so we can get a look at her. And uh, if she's marked, this was one of my bees that swarmed. If she's not marked, we're going to catch her and mark her today. And right there. And that's how you get stung on the thumb. There's a little worker bee right under my thumb there, and I just felt the stinger go right in. So, once again, failed. Stung every time just because you touch a bee the wrong way. And of course, the bee, once they sting you, they die. So it's up to us to try to keep from smushing or stinging bees while we do our inspections, although sometimes it seems unavoidable. Lots of pollen here. Again, nectar mixed in, got some eggs, some capped brood. That is uh, finished honey on the top right there, that frame. A 
to smoke my hand a little bit here because remember once uh, you get stung that little threat pheromone goes with that stinger and of course we don't want to stir up any of the other bees so smoke your hand a little bit and smoke your arm make sure that you don't set off any alarms when you're going through here because I would really like to not have to wear gloves for this inspection because if you see the queen you're not going to grab her with your gloves on More capped honey here, nice and smooth at the top. Got some burr comb down on the bottom there, but there's no evidence of queen cells. So they're not looking to get out of here. That's important to note too. If there were some queen cells going there, then I've got another colony I could transfer those to. Lots of uh, pollen again. The environment is really providing well for them right now. If the weather would just continue to cooperate, we've had quite a bit of rain recently. And there's the queen right there, and I got her. So she looks young to me, actually. And she's not marked. So guess what? Time to get out my one-handed queen marking cage. So we're going to stick her right inside here. She's a little scrappy yeah there she is she looks good to me but uh, that means that this did not come from one of my hives or if it did it was an after swarm with an immature queen in it because she was not marked so we're going to take care of that right now and I'm going to show you the pen that uh, I've been using this year probably used it last year too but these paint markers MPD 15 they dry really fast. And I notice that the bees have not been very good at chewing off those uh, thorax marks. And uh, so if you can find these, they're pretty good. So I like to line her up until she's parallel with these little open slats here. Then I can get her pinned down. Now underneath, of course, it's spongy and soft so you don't harm the queen. And right there, we're gonna get her lined up and then I'm gonna mark her thorax. So just really light there. Do some test marking on the wood next to you to make sure the paint's coming out easy. Don't paint her head, don't paint her wings if you can avoid it. Just get it on the thorax enough so that she'll stand out. And you'll know that that's your queen and you also know that the white dot is for 2021. So this helps us gauge the longevity of the queens, how old they are. Now because that little cage is like a queen excluder, the workers can actually get in with her. Need about 30 seconds uh, for that to be completely dry and you can't rub off that paint. So for them to get in there, uh, they're not going to be able to groom off her mark while she's in that cage. So then we're just going to get all these uh, frames back together now. I'm satisfied that the colony is developing, that they're growing, that they're healthy. There are eggs, there's larvae, there's capped brood, and now we have this queen who appears young. And of course she was unmarked, so she's less than a year old. And so this looks like it's going to be a strong colony. They just might build up enough resources to get them through the coming winter. So if they fill the rest of the frames here, right now uh, in the single deep box, 10 frame, if they fill these up, eight of those frames get full, I'm going to put a super on there. And uh, we're just finished up with the first week of September, so I think we're pretty good because they'll have a good three weeks to four weeks of nectar and pollen gathering going on. So I think we'll have to revisit this colony in another two or three weeks and see if we don't need to add that super. And we have to release the queen. That's why I push the frames back together. I'd like to release her on the brood frame there where we collected her. And hopefully she'll go right down in between those frames. Oh, she just flew right over to the frame in the first position right there. So she actually flew out, did a little loop and went down. She could have just as easily 
flown right off of the beehive. So it's really important to keep your grass mowed tight. If you're a queen or if she flew out and missed the edge of the box and went right down on the ground, you'd have to go and catch her quick. So that was a pretty swift move on her part. Anyway, this should answer the questions uh, that people have had about how that swarm that we collected in the storm is faring. So they're doing really well. I think it's worth uh, the time that we took to hive them up. We know that they're using the Cirrusel frames and the acorn frames equally. So one's as good as the other in my book right now. They're both nice and firm, heavy wax. The bees are cleaning them up. They're not avoiding the plastic. And I do like the wooden frames with the acorn inserts in them because we can cut those corners and the bees can use those to transit through. Don't forget to push all your frames towards the middle so that the next time you come to do an inspection, you can pull them to the side and not risk rolling your queen. So we get that frame holder off of there. Don't need it today. Everything went pretty smooth other than a sting on the thumb. And we're going to put that uh, insulated hive cover back on. We're going to be testing through this winter. It's looking promising as well. You have the option with this of having an open vent at the top, another entrance at the top, or no entrance and no vent. So that's a position I'm putting them on. No upper entrance, no upper vent. And it's an R10 insulator, and I have that Apis Rapid Round Feeder on there. So if I do decide that I need to feed them, let's say we get five days of nothing but rain and cooler weather, I definitely would put uh, sugar syrup in for this colony. So thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. Have a great day.